Hi, today I want to talk about interesting, important um, problem that appears in programming challenge, appears in interview questions, appears in fun puzzles, appears everywhere, and you can find ton of materials about this problem over the web. But I found it more interesting to talk about it in a little bit more depth and consider different alternative solutions for the problem as well. It is called 2x problem or x problem. What is the problem? We have 2x or several x and we know that a very tall building and we know that this x will break at um, if we drop them at a specific floor and upward. We want to find the first floor that they break if we drop from that floor. Let's say floor x. We want to find the value x. At the same time, we want to minimize number of examinations we make to find this floor x. So now you may say that what's the application of this application is actually in other scenarios is very simple to face into the condition that you want to examine breaking point of uh, some material. And instead of building, you have other powers to push pressure. And examination of the breaking point is already costly because you break something if it breaks and this is costly. Also, the power you spend to examine this uh, action is also costly. So, and this X, of course, the are a special X, uh, otherwise normal X, if you drop them from one meter high, if they will drop. And as you can see, we have also very special building is drawn by very famous artist that I want to uh, hide his name. And there are people living in these buildings. One of them is coming from shopping. Another one is in the balloon up there. And there is a dad and a son. They are looking at each other and saying hi to each other. And what they want to do, they want to examine here is zoomed version of that building. Um, first, little kid drops the egg and then egg is, is surviving. Then ask the dad to drop the egg and dad does that, but the egg this time cannot tolerate and breaks and it's um, ready to be eaten. And we know that between the floor that kid leaves and the floor that dad leaves, somewhere between or maybe the floor of dad, is where the egg breaks. We want to find this breaking point. So this is the question. Before we answer this question, because we want to tackle this question programmatically as well as mathematically both of the direction, both direction, I want to say how does my egg looks like. This gentleman egg looks like the following. It uh, it has a attribute called breaking point and it, only the egg itself knows what is the breaking point and can answer query of is breaking to others from outside and whenever someone asks whether the egg is breaking increases the number of tests that was made on this egg so this is our egg structure and the first and uh, and we design a solver class solver function if you don't need to know c plus plus anything like that or any programming language these are like uh, these codes are talking to you basically and there is not nothing special about it the first and simplest approach is to examine every floor of course you examine from the first floor now uh, here in the while loop is starting from i equals one floor equals one we examine every floor upwards of course you don't examine backward like if you don't examine from floor 100 then 99 because you may break the first egg in the floor 100 and then break the second egg from floor 99 
and then you have no knowledge uh, except that it breaks in the last two floors you don't know maybe it breaks already in the floor five so we examine floor from floor one and go upwards can we do that faster can we examine fewer floors yes why not we can skip every second floor right and we can skip all floors and this is an example implementation of escaping the odd floors and it's just instead of increasing the floor number by one we increase the floor number by two and if it breaks at some place we just examine the floor before and this is in the if part you can see if egg is breaking at floor i then also examine floor i minus one so far so good but can we do faster can we is, uh, instead of examining half of the floor if we skip every second floor we may examine half of the floors in the worst case right uh, can we do faster can we skip more instead of skipping constant amount of value we skip something related to building size and this time we examine escaping root n many floors and you will see the result of all this examination later at the end, almost end of the video. Uh, and we have, uh, we will call these functions and we will see what happens to them. So let's skip root n uh, floors every time. And this is an example of implementation. Again, we skip instead of increasing i by one or two by some constants, we increase it by root n. And then whenever it breaks uh, in the if part, you can see we find the exact floor that uh, this uh, egg was surviving at. By going to the last floor that it wasn't break, the first egg didn't break. And then from there, we go upward to the point that it breaks. And somewhere in between is the breaking point for sure. So this is how to do with skipping root n many floors every time. But but is this the best we can do? Can we improve it further? There is no clear definition of what is uh, improving, what is the best uh, algorithm. Because we really don't know where the egg breaks. But what we can do is that we can improve the worst case. In the worst case, for example, in root n case, uh, we could may we may examine two times root n many uh, options. And the question is that whether we can improve that uh, and examine less than two times root n many uh, breaking points. So let's see. It. What is the idea here? What can you say here? If we drop the uh, egg from floor K and it survives, but then in the next drop, if we drop it from floor T and it breaks, for the remaining egg, the only remaining egg, we should examine every floor, a starting floor from K plus one and up to T minus one. To see whether it breaks on that floors or not if it doesn't break on any of them then it the breaking point is t otherwise is something between k and t so basically this is what we do, should do examine every k plus one to t minus one floor to k plus one to t minus one t minus one and what does it mean suppose it was uh, last time we drop it from floor t and it survived and there are two possibilities sorry if at floor t survives then uh, we go a little bit up how much up i will tell you in a moment okay i wrote here we go to t to t minus one but if it doesn't survive we already did one examination we should survive floor one to t minus one right so we have t minus one more examination to be done in the worst case. Therefore, if it survives, it, if it doesn't break, we do 
the same. We make the same amount of examinations all the time. We want to minimize the worst case. And for that, we make sure that every time, if it survives or if it breaks, the worst case is the, uh, is the same. The worst case scenario uh, has this, uh, spends the same value in both cases. So if we drop it at floor T for the first time, if it does even and if it breaks, we need at most T minus one examination or in the worst case T minus one examination, further examination to whether find whether it breaks in floor one or up to T minus one. But if it doesn't break, we want to optimize the number of uh, test so we go only t minus one floor up because then we need to examine if bricks at that point we need to examine t minus two many floors and we already had two examinations so in total we have t examination or in other words we start to examine floor t then examine floor two t minus one or and then Add t minus two to it, and you got the pattern, right? T plus t minus one plus t minus two plus t minus three, and so on, and up to plus one, and this total value should be at least n. N is the number of floors. So, um, what we should do first try is to try at floor t and then floor 2t minus 1 and so on and then first t that uh, satisfies the above equation is the value that we want to uh, is the optimal floor that we want to start with and here is the example quote sample quote sample implementation quote for it and it's very simple. We start from some lower bound and upper bound. I took lower bound to be root n and upper bound to be two root n. Writing comments for me why this lower bound and upper bound uh, are good for our t value. And then we want to have this summation t plus t minus 1 plus t minus 2 and so on to be bigger than or equal to n. And t times t plus 1 divided by 2 is exactly that summation. And the first t that satisfies this condition is the solution, in the, is the first floor that we will examine. And then we know that mm, logic, we go t minus 1 floor up and then next time t minus 2 floor up and examine and so on. Until it breaks, then we go to the last floor that it wasn't break and then examine everything up there. And this is the optimal solution, but, and we can simulate it. And uh, I don't want to discuss the simulation. Uh, you can ask me if you want to have the code. I can send you the code via email. Just write me in the comments your email address and I will send you the code. And But if I get many requests, then I should put it somewhere public. So this is a simulation that says that you know, how many uh, uh, the ROPs we did to find the breaking point of the egg. But, but maybe you say that, okay, this was too much mathematical. I want to ask computers to do the job for me. I don't want to think too much. I'm lazy a little bit. Okay, you're like me. I'm also lazy. I don't want to do it myself. I don't want to think too much mathematically because we are human. We make errors like, right? So let's ask computers to do that. And the algorithm is pretty simple, actually. If you are familiar with uh, dynamic programming, then it's very simple. If you are not familiar, then I provide a short explanation. What we can see is uh, uh, in the for loop, you can see it. Now, the first uh, parts are just examining uh, examining whether we are in the floor one or with whether we have um, one egg and something like that. If we have one egg, then we should examine every floor. Otherwise, or if we are in floor one, then 
you have the answer is the floor one so we are in a for loop in a for loop what we do we examine uh, two cases either if we drop it from the ice floor it uh, either survives or breaks if it survives then um, we call optimal for many we recursively call the same function uh, for the remaining floors how many floors left we dropped from for i and it survives and we had uh, n many floors or uh, the here in input is floors okay so number of floors minus i many floor remains how many egg remains the same amount of egg we had as before right so number of eggs doesn't change so this is the second optimal for many call you can see a bottom of the page and close to the if uh, condition conditional uh, statement and another case is that the egg breaks in that case we examine uh, every floor before before that right we have what does it mean we have i minus one floors and number of eggs reduced by one we examine everything up um, on that bracket and the, finally we output the optimum so but this function is not really interesting because it's a recursive call in a sense that it doesn't work if uh, the number of calls is too much you should convert it to the for loop but then it will be a very complicated looking function and here is the result of our functions i examined it for 100 floor building and i said that the breaking point of the egg is floor 34 and uh, first try was to examine every floor so of course it's 34 many tries second try was a skip and drop uh, skipping every second floor and it resulted in 18 drop and then the next one was a skip root n many floors this uh, resulted in eight tries and then last one was improving the worst case it was uh, 10 tera uh, resulted in 10 tries as you can see it is better than eight tries of the it is worse than eight tries of the skip root n many floors this is then a little bit suspicious right then next i tried it with the optimum algorithm for instead of uh for two eggs for three eggs and then uh, you can see the simulation at the bottom first egg dropped from floor 41 and broken there the second egg dropped from floor 37 and the mm, uh, last egg the final egg uh, dropped from for, mm, 34 and broke there and total number of tries here was even better than the mm, uh, algorithm for root n which is seven minute tries so uh, and you see that if i have two eggs only then optimal worst case is not necessarily better than root n algorithm so i was also wondering whether um, uh, root n algorithm is better than the optimum uh, worst case algorithm optimum worst case of course doesn't optimize the number of tries in every case but optimize the worst case so um, i ran many examples many samples and i found that optimum worst case algorithm and these samples they are like 10000 samples and each of them has buildings of uh, very high length like uh, 20000 floors and interestingly optimum worst case was in average prior to making seven less tries than root n algorithm but in a worst case optimum uh, optimum worst case algorithm <laughs> okay it's not a worst case of the optimum worst case algorithm in a worst case of uh, compared to the root n algorithm it makes 200 more examinations but root n algorithm in the worst case made 140 more examinations so 
worst case of root n algorithm is not that bad, right? But worst case of worst case algorithm is bad. No, but the point is that the worst case scenario that root n algorithm makes is two times root n, right? Like if uh, is ten thousand height building is you know, two hundred examinations, and worst case of the you know, worst case algorithm is in this case one hundred fifty something like that. 140 exa more exactly and yes 140 and 200 they differ a little bit but they differ not too much they differ 60 but there are cases that this uh, worst case algorithm doesn't perform well like um, uh, the root n is more homogeneous algorithm it doesn't go very bad in any case but even though its worst case is worse than the worst case optimum algorithm, but in general, it never goes very bad. And it's not uh, variant, uh, its variance is not too big. Then I also consider the median, median of this, uh, and the difference in median of these algorithms. And I found that the uh, Again, the worst case optimum performs um, a little bit better with making six less tries than root n algorithm. That was it. Let me know what question you want to be discussed next.